Tucson Bicycle Classic, a stage race held in the greater Tucson area at the end of February. Riders from all over the U.S. come to compete at this race. I was racing in the pro field. The field was absolutely stacked. I was prepared to get my legs completely blown off. Teams were there like Project Echelon who just returned from Europe and they were mixing it up with world tour pros and field sprints and they had 10 riders at this race. Also Team California, CS Velo and Automatic had big representation in the field. The field was 127 riders deep and as I quickly learned throughout this weekend of racing, each one of those 127 riders was incredibly comfortable in the pack, move around, shooting small gaps. It was a crazy ride. This was gonna be my biggest challenge yet. The race started with a TT on Friday, a road race on Saturday, and a circuit race on Sunday. So I'm gonna take you to Thursday to start the story. Let's get into it. Okay, well, we are done with Valley of the Sun, and now we are headed to Tucson Bicycle Classic. Another race weekend, another stage race. I'm excited, but again, this one, whew. If you didn't watch the Valley of the Sun, I explained, but I'm racing in the pro field. Project Echelon has 10 guys. It's going to be a completely stacked field. Pretty nervous, I definitely have not experienced anything like this before. But before all of that, Today is Thursday and we're headed to go pick up our buddy Luke who flew down from Oregon to race this race with us. I'm gonna pick him up from the airport right now. Get into it, got a shake out ride today. I'm excited. Welcome back to another video guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the support. Let's do it. So we headed to the Phoenix airport to pick up our buddy Luke. Luke will be racing in the Cat 4 field. He is not new to cycling, but he is new to racing. If you don't remember him, well, last year was his first year of racing. Unfortunately though, last year, in the middle of race season, he broke his femur on a training ride while he was down visiting me in Northern California. The guy is an absolute tank though, and railed back and was on the trainer after six weeks of breaking his femur. And he was able to sneak some races in to the back end of last year. So he is amped and ready to race. He is such a good vibe to have around on the bike. So I was beyond excited to have him fly out to meet us for this race. He has also never done a time trial, let alone a huge stage race. So it's gonna be super fun to film him experiencing these things for the first time. We had to pack the car tight to fit everything, but we made it happen. And now we had a two hour drive to Tucson. We grabbed some food and before we knew it, we were staring at the mountain range in the distance. Tucson is home to Mount Lemon, a 9,171 foot tall mountain that lurks in the background. It is a beautiful ride, or so I'm told. Unfortunately, during this trip, we didn't have any time to ride up Mount Lemon or do the legendary shootout. A group ride in Tucson that is said to be the fastest group ride in the continental US. Comment down below if you want myself and maybe Coach Tyler to go back to Arizona in the future to film some content up Mount Lemon and try the shootout. Anyway, as we arrived at our host house, a huge thank you to Steve and Sam for hosting us at this beautiful home in Tucson. I mean, honestly, the accommodations were as good as they get. We were incredibly comfortable and I mean, look at this house, it's beautiful. So the plan today was for Luke to build his bike and he and I would drive over to the TT course and do some openers and recon on the course. I really wanted to try to do my best in this race. If I could get top 40 in the TT, I would be ecstatic. I didn't know how I would really compare to some of the best to do it in the US. So if I could get in that upper half, I would seriously be over the moon. So with those expectations rolling through my head, Luke and I drove over and rode the course. The course is a short 4.6 mile flat road off of the freeway in Northern Tucson. The problem Luke and I quickly found out as we were riding the course was that it was incredibly windy. 
there was absolutely no cover so you were getting blasted from every direction with the wind the nice part was we were riding at roughly the same time as my start time tomorrow and i looked at my wind app on my phone and it said that the wind was the same mile per hour now as it was going to be tomorrow for my race so i talked to coach tyler and we came up with a pace and a plan and like i said the effort is only going to be a little over nine minutes so it's not as much about pacing as a longer tt but there's definitely still some strategy involved so Tyler told me because it is a headwind going out and a tailwind coming back, the plan was to burn 95% of my energy going out to the turn and use my remaining 5% energy to basically survive the way back. I was pretty nervous. I really wanted to do good, but I know I couldn't get too upset if I didn't perform well because I still am new to all this and I'm still learning. Coach Tyler reminds me of that pretty much every phone call we have before a race, which honestly really helps me not get too in my head or honestly burned out because of the expectations I'm putting on myself. I definitely experienced some of that feeling early into the race season last year, so I'm doing my best to work on that to avoid that this year. It really is nice to have a mentor that is looking out for me in that way. So one more sleep and it's time to race. Today is the first day of the Tucson Bicycle Classic here in Tucson. Who would have thought? Got some updates for you. So the time trials today, I will put the route on the screen right here. It's going to be full gas. It's a prologue, so it's like nine to 10 minute effort. Um, the KOM is 911. So hopefully, best case scenario, I'm under 10. But yeah, we're going out there. Gonna link up with Tony and the vegans, or not the vegan cyclists, VC Adventures. Shout out Tyler. I'm really looking forward to seeing them, so you'll see them on the camera. And Tony is Tyler and I's friend. He was with us in San Luis Obispo, if you remember him from those vlogs, if you've been watching this channel for a while. But another sad update. Unfortunately, Luke woke up this morning with a head cold and a fever, so he's going to skip the TT um, and email the head ref. They did say you can skip the TT and still race the other two days just not really contend for GC like he would take the last place this is time for the time trial which really sucks um, I, I feel so bad for Luke but I'm hoping he can kind of just sleep it off today and maybe see how he feels tomorrow so we are we're hoping we're hoping he feels better but nevertheless the show's got to go on so I'm feeling okay ish today I would say um, definitely a little bit nervous don't really know what to expect. It was really windy when we were out there yesterday at the time trial course, so we're gonna see how much of a factor that plays. But uh, yeah, just gonna give it full gas, give it the beans we have. And we're going early to make sure that we capture the vibes of the time trial, the event. They have food trucks out there. I'm really excited. It should be kind of fun. Alyssa, how are you feeling this morning? I am feeling fantastic this morning. Um, very excited for the food trucks. If you know me or have ever met me, you know I'm very much in love with food, so I'm very much looking forward to that today. Sick. Well, let's get after it. Honestly, the first day of the Tucson Bicycle Classic was awesome. They had brought food trucks out like we had talked about and the food was really good. They had really good parking situation and a solid bathroom situation at this TT. They also had a spot sectioned off for us to warm up. Even though it really wasn't that big of a section, it was kind of tough to get your openers in, but 
they did the best with what they had, so I can't really fault the organizers for that. If you are interested in coming to this event next year, check out their website. I'll pop it up on the screen right now. Or you can register on Bike Rag. Just search for Tucson or Tucson Bicycle Classic, and it should pop up for y'all. I will do the rating for this race at the end of all the races, but this was a super stolid start for them to get some good ratings. So back to the race. It was time to get ready. And unlike Valley of the Sun the weekend before, I did actually have a teammate here with me, my buddy Jeffrey. And he was kind enough to bring me a skin suit. So for this TT, I had a skin suit and an arrow helmet, which may not seem like a big difference in the Valley of the Sun TT where I didn't have these things, but sometimes those little arrow advantages can add up. Anyway, before I knew it, it was time to go. I was definitely nervous, like I said, but something that Tyler has been talking to me a lot about is making sure that I have the routine dialed in. He said the nerves will always be there, no matter how long you race, but you'll be able to control them a little bit more the more you dial in your routine, and you can predict how you feel the more you dial in your routine. So it definitely is something to work on and something that I am focusing on in these early season races. But here we go. It's go time. Okay, so I'll put my effort on the screen right here. 501 watts for nine minutes. I'm pretty stoked with that. Well, <laughs> I wish. that That's estimated power because I don't have a power meter on the TT bike I am borrowing. Based on heart rate and efforts that I've done before, I'm guessing it's probably like 450 to 460, maybe 470 watts, some somewhere in that area, but definitely not 500. That would be, uh, that would be a dream. But Let's do a quick little bike breakdown real quick before we dive too much further into this TT breakdown. I'm riding a 2016 Bianchi Aquila CV. It is my buddy Sean's bike and it's a 52, I believe, I think. A 52 or a 53, which for me being six foot three, it, it is a bit of a tight fit, but we've actually made it work pretty well. And then the disc wheel on the back that you see is from our lovely coach, Tyler. It is a lightweight disc and it makes this thing absolutely fly. Okay. So anyway, now that we have the bike breakdown out of the way, back to the result. I freaking ended up 20th, which I, I am honestly over the moon with. I truly am. Like I know that if I wanted to crack the top 20, I really, really would need to work on my position and be able to sustain that power and honestly probably just get a little bit stronger. But this was an amazing start. And I am, I, I am quite proud of that effort. I was 26 seconds off from the leader, which is a pretty good margin. But again, I will 110% take the effort that I did. The TT was won by Project Echelon's Brendan Rim, and he is one fast mother. Yo, okay, we just got the results. 20th, I will 110% take that. I was shooting for like top 40. So to get 20th and 26 second back, that is not bad at all. Like. I have honestly over the moon one of the better efforts I think I could have done. Um, I think uh, a lot of those seconds come down to power. If I was a little bit stronger, that would help. And then just bike fit. So besides that, we will definitely take that. But Tyler and I are going to go get some sick drone shots, some B-roll stuff right now. And then uh, head home, check on Luke. <coughs> I'm still coughing from that after that. It, it hurt. It was hard. But uh, it was a good time. It was fun. So, yeah, like I said, I'm gonna go get some drone shots, go check on Luke, get some food, and then uh, road race tomorrow morning. Just like that, day one was complete. I am happy with the day, but to be honest, I was also pretty tired. My whoop score hasn't really ever been great since Valley of the Sun. These race weekends are a blast, but I definitely let myself get a little bit too stressed out with everything that has to do with the racing sometimes. And again, it is something I'm working on. And this is also something Tyler's helped me out with, the mental side of racing. We can talk more about that later and comment down below if you want Tyler and I to do a video about how he prepares for races to make sure he's mentally locked in. Anyway, our amazing hosts made us a freaking delicious dinner and then well, it was time to go to bed and wake up and race again for the road race. But 
I'm going to leave y'all on a cliffhanger. I'll be posting part two of this video in the next couple days with the road race and the circuit breakdown and everything else that happened in Tucson and all those results. So if y'all wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button, it really does help the channel out a ton. It is completely free and it opens opportunities to make this thing a sustainable business. If you like the content and enjoy the videos we're putting out here and want me to keep producing them, please subscribing really does go a long way. We have some awesome stuff planned. And like I said, part two of this video will be coming out in the next couple of days. So you won't want to miss it. Thank you so much for all the support as always. Seriously, you guys are amazing. I can't believe we're at 12K already. Like, yeah, just mind blowing and this, this is really starting to turn into a real thing. So thank you guys. I like this. Yeah. I just, I just can't put it into words, but it is, it has been fun and I'm excited to keep this journey going. So thank you all. And we will see you very, very soon. Peace.